8th grade, Unit 4, Lesson 5, Solving Any Linear Equation. Let's solve linear equations. Learning Targets. I can solve an equation where the variable appears on both sides. Number 1. Solve each of these equations. Explain or show your reasoning. Let's use the distributive property to multiply 2 times x, and that's 2x, and to multiply 2 times a positive 5, and that's a positive 10. So on the left side it reads 2x plus 10, and on the right side it reads 3x plus 1. Now, let's collect like terms. Since we have more x's on the right, let's get rid of the x's on the left. 2x minus 2x equals 0, so those x's are cancelled out. To keep the equation balanced, we need to subtract 2x from the right side of the equal sign. 3x minus 2x equals 1x, and 1x is the same as x. Now the equation reads 10 equals x plus 1. We still need to get that x all by itself, so we need to take away 1 from the right side. 1 minus 1 cancels each other out, and to keep it balanced, we need to take away 1 from the left side. 10 minus 1 is 9. Now the equation reads 9 equals x, which is the same thing as x equals 9. Look at the second equation. There's more y's on the left hand side, so let's take away the negative 2y on the right hand side. And we do that by adding 2y. We have to add 2y to both sides to keep it balanced. So on the right, they cancel each other out. On the left, we have 3y plus 2y, and that equals 5y. Now the equation reads 5y minus 4 equals 6. We need to get rid of the minus 4, and we do that by adding 4. But to keep it balanced, we have to add 4 to both sides. So on the left side, they cancel each other out. On the right side, 6 plus 4 equals 10. The equation now reads 5y equals 10. We want to get the y by itself, so we have to divide it by 5. 5y divided by 5, and 10 divided by 5. 5y divided by 5 is 1y, which is the same as y, and 10 divided by 5 is 2, so y equals 2. Look at the third equation. We can use the distributive property to multiply 3 times n, and to multiply 3 times a positive 2. On the right-hand side of the equation, we can use the distributive property to multiply 9 times 6, and 9 times a negative n. Now the equation reads 3n plus 6 equals 54 minus 9n. Since the n's on the left hand side are positive, let's collect our n's on the left hand side. Negative 9n plus 9n on the right, and then on the left we'll also have to add a positive 9n. So negative 9n plus 9n cancels each other out, and 3n plus 9n equals 12n. Now the equation reads 12n plus 6 equals 54. We still need to get the n by itself on the left, so we have to get rid of the positive 6 by subtracting 6. We need to subtract 6 from both sides. Positive 6 minus 6 cancels each other out, and 54 minus 6 equals 48. Now the equation reads 12n equals 48. We want to know the value for 1n, so we have to divide 12n by 12, and to keep it balanced we have to divide 48 by 12. 12n divided by 12 equals 1n, and 1n is the same as n. The equation reads n equals 48 over 12, and 48 divided by 12 is 4, so n equals 4. Number 2. Claire was solving an equation. But when she checked her answer, she saw her solution was incorrect. She knows she made a mistake, but she can't find it. Where is Claire's mistake, and what is the solution to the equation? Use the distributive property to multiply 12 times 5. Claire wrote down that 12 times 5 was 72, but 12 times 5 is 60. So there is one mistake that Claire made. On the right hand side of the equal sign you have a negative times a negative, and Claire wrote the answer as a negative, but a negative times a negative is a positive, so there's the second mistake that Claire made. Let's fix those mistakes and continue solving the equation. On the right hand side of the equal sign, let's collect the terms with a y. 4y 
plus 9y equals 13y. Now the equation reads 60 plus 24y equals 13y minus 5. Since there's more y's on the left hand side of the equal sign, let's get rid of the 13 y's on the right side of the equal sign. And to keep it balanced, we have to subtract 13 y from the left side of the equal sign. We've canceled out the y's on the right, and 24 y minus 13 y equals 11 y. So now the equation reads 60 plus 11 y equals negative 5. We want the y's by themselves, so we'll have to get rid of this 60 from the left, and to keep it balanced, we'll have to get rid of 60 from the right. 60 minus 60 cancels each other out, and negative 5 minus 60 equals negative 65. Now the equation reads 11y equals negative 65. Since we want to solve for the value of y, we need just one y. So we'll have to divide 11y by 11, and to keep it balanced, we have to divide the right side by 11. 11y divided by 11 equals 1y, which is the same as y, and negative 65 divided by 11 doesn't give us a whole number, so we'll just leave it as y equals negative 65 elevenths. Number 3. Solve each equation and check your solution. Let's take a closer look at the first equation. Use the distributive property to multiply 1 9th times 2m and 1 9th times negative 16. On the right hand side of the equal sign, use the distributive property to multiply 1 3rd times 2m and multiply 1 3rd times a positive 4. Before I collect like terms, I'll create common denominators. 2 thirds m is the same as 6 ninths m, and positive 4 thirds is the same as positive 12 ninths. So now the equation has common denominators and I can collect like terms. Since the value for m is greater on the right side of the equal sign, I'm going to take away 2 ninths m from the left side of the equal sign. And to keep it balanced, I'll take away 2 ninths m from the right side of the equal sign. We've canceled the m out on the left, and we have a total of 4 ninths m on the right. Get the m by itself by subtracting 12 ninths from the right side, and to keep it balanced, subtract 12 ninths from the left side. We've canceled 12 ninths out from the right, and we have negative 28 ninths on the left. Now the equation reads negative 28 ninths equals 4 ninths m. We want to know the value for 1m, so we have to multiply by the reciprocal of 4 ninths, which means we need to multiply by 9 fourths. And we have to do that to both sides to keep it balanced. 9 times 4 and 4 times 9 both equal 36. 36 divided by 36 is 1, so now we have 1m. And that's why we multiplied by the reciprocal, to make it 1. And on the left side, we have negative 28 ninths times 9 fourths, and that equals... Negative 7. Negative 7 equals m, or m equals negative 7. Let's take a closer look at the next equation. Use the distributive property. Make sure you use the distributive property for both terms inside the parentheses. Now the equation reads negative 4r minus 8 equals 8 minus 8r. Since negative 4r is actually greater than negative 8r, I'll add 8r to the right hand side to cancel out the negative 8r, and to balance it out, I'll add 8r to the left hand side. This means that I'm collecting the terms with an r, on the left hand side of the equal sign. So anything that doesn't have an R needs to go to the right hand side of the equal sign. I need to get rid of this negative 8 and I'll do that by adding 8 to both sides to keep it balanced. Now the equation reads 4R equals 16. I still need to get the R by itself. 4R divided by 4 and to keep it balanced I need to divide 16 by 4. Now the equation reads R equals 4. So the value for r is 4. Let's take a look at the last equation for number 3. Use the distributive property to multiply by the first term in the parentheses. 
and don't forget to use the distributive property to multiply by the second term in each set of parentheses. And don't forget to bring down the 4y. Since 24y is larger than 4y plus 9y, let's collect the terms with y on the left side of the equal sign. And we can do this by getting rid of the 4y from the right side of the equal sign, and we have to do that on both sides of the equal sign to keep it balanced. And you have to get rid of 9y from both sides of the equal sign to keep it balanced. I want the term with a y in it to be all by itself on the left side of the equal sign. So I need to get rid of this 60. And I'll do that by subtracting 60 from both sides to keep it balanced. Now the equation reads 11y equals negative 66. I want to know the value for 1y. So I need to divide both sides by 11. Now the equation reads y equals negative 6. Number 4. Here is the graph of a linear equation. Select all true statements about the line and its equation. A. One solution of the equation is the ordered pair 3 and 2. I plotted the point for ordered pair 3 and 2 and the point lands on the line. Statement A is a true statement. B. One solution of the equation is ordered pair negative 1 and 1. And since this point also lands on the line, statement B is a true statement. C. One solution of the equation is ordered pair 1 and 3 halves. This point also lands on the line. So statement C is also a true statement. D. There are two solutions. The length of this line is infinite. Therefore, there's an infinite number of points that could fit on this line. So statement D is not true because there are an infinite amount of solutions. E. There are infinitely many solutions. Well, we've already discovered that that's true. F. The equation of the line is y equals 1 fourth x plus 5 fourths. Let's use the ordered pairs 3 and 2 since they are a solution to the equation. Let's substitute the y with the 2 and the x with the 3. Now the equation reads 2 equals 1 fourth times 3 over 1 plus 5 fourths. 1 fourth times 3 equals 3 fourths. 3 fourths plus 5 fourths equals 8 fourths, and 8 fourths is equivalent to 2. So this is a solution. Since 2 does equal 2, the statement for f is true. g. The equation of the line is y equals 5 fourth x plus 1 fourth. Again, let's use the ordered pairs 3 and 2. So we'll substitute the y with the 2 and the x with a 3. 5 fourths times 3 equals 15 fourths, and 15 fourths plus 1 fourth is 16 fourths, and 16 fourths is 16 divided by 4, which is 4, and 2 does not equal 4. Statement G is not true. Number 5. A participant in a 21 mile walkathon walks a steady rate of 3 miles per hour. He thinks the relationship between the number of miles left to walk and the number of hours I already walked can be represented by a line with a slope of negative 3. Do you agree with his claim? Explain your reasoning. This represents a graph with the hours walked along the x-axis or horizontal axis and the miles remaining along the vertical axis or the y-axis. And notice that this line has a negative slope. The number of miles remaining decreases as the hours walked increases. The rise is a negative 3 and the run is a positive 1. That means the slope is negative 3. Yes, I agree. Show me some love. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.